So in our immediate focus is on the youth yeah. that come to us. Um, so they're age 16 to 24, they're homeless, so it would be helping homeless youth. Okay, so another thing would be, like, what big accomplishments does, like, this charity have for over the next, like, five, six years? So one big one would be in February, that's Covenant House Month, we made an announcement that we have purchased a home, um, and it's currently being renovated where it all... Um, house seven women or young girls at a time um, in particular those that come to us from prostitution and human trafficking so it'll be separate from this location but it'll provide a lot of the same services but just they need a little bit different mm -hmm. approach and care than some of the other kids that we see another big one is um, expanding our transitional housing initiative so on site here we have 28 beds and then we have four apartments in the community. They're bachelor units that have been donated to us by developing companies. And we rent them out to our kids at a subsidized rate. So right now we have four, and we're looking to expand that to 20. Perfect. So um, other than being like a youth shelter, like specifically meant for youth, is there anything else that makes like this charity extremely unique? Well, we operate on a US model. So um, we actually get 80% of our total operating budget, which is $21.8 million. We get 80% of that from donations. Okay. Um, and the majority of those come from individuals. So people like your parents or yourselves that choose to make a donation, um, that's where a lot of the money comes from, which is pretty different from a lot of other charities who might get um, a lot of their money from the government. Um, and we're more than just a shelter here. We mm -hmm. offer a lot of other services to our kids. We have a healthcare clinic on site. We have a school that's affiliated with the Catholic District School Board. We have an arts and minds program. We have our culinary arts program um, that has a 70% success rate for those kids who are enrolled in it. They get a job straight out of that program. Um, we offer mentorship for our kids, workshops. So. We're more than just a place to stay for kids. Yeah. We offer a lot of other things that help them move from, you know, a life on the street to one with a future. Um, also, you said with the donations, it's like people, do, is that anonymous or do you actually know who's donating or is it kind of like either or? Oh, it could be both. Oh. It's up to the donor to, if they choose to be anonymous, that's fine. Um, but of our, a lot of our donors, yeah, we know their name and yeah. so when we thank them, we would thank them personally. So, do you have any like, major sponsors or like people who donate? So, the major one would be uh, individuals. So, right. like if 80% is coming from donations, about 80% of that, 80%, right. is um, coming from individuals. So, that's right. where the bulk of the money comes from. We also get money from corporations and foundations, mm -hmm. people um, who leave gifts to us in their will. We fundraise with our special events. Um, and then community partners who decide that they want to fundraise for us so like schools will sometimes fundraise or people who want instead of like for their birthday gift they say can you make a gift to Covenant House those mm -hmm. kind of things um, so there's a lot of different ways that we yeah. get the money we also get some money from the government and we do get some funding from other Catholic charities right. mm -hmm. okay, um, how does the community respond to the charity? I think that we are well supported, we're pretty well known, um, and we have quite a few community partners, other organizations that we'll partner with, but also um, people like the Toronto Police, Bill Blair, Bill Blair is on our board, um, and he's a strong supporter of Covenant House, and will refer kids to us, and things like that. Um, are there any restrictions to who you serve? You need to be within the age range, so 16 to 24. Um, and other than that, we're pretty open and accepting of all individuals who come to us, no matter, mm -hmm. you know, where they're coming from. Another thing would be um, we're an abstinence-based shelter, so you can't be actively using drugs or alcohol while you're staying here. If you are committed to um, changing that, you would like to get help, then we're totally willing to help you with that. Um, but yeah, you can't be actively using that's just for the safety of everybody, yeah. just for a safe place for, yeah. Um, like with your setup here, would like the 
boys, I guess, be in one area and the girls in another. And when we took the elevator, um, like the second and third floor, there are right. bedrooms, and then okay. the boys and girls are on different floors. Same right. with the transitional housing. The girls are on the fourth floor, and the boys are on the third floor right. in that. Okay, so I guess we're going to like a bit of the history of the charity. So like, when did it begin, and like who founded the actual charity? Yep, so the full story is on our website, right. but in summary, <laughs> we were founded in 1982 by Cardinal Carter, and he was an archdiocese in the church, and he looked out his office window one day and saw that there were a lot of hom homeless youth out there, and he didn't know what to do about it. At that time, Covenant House New York had been established, so we got in touch with them about best practices and, you know, what can I do to help? And he started Covenant House Toronto, and it started out as a 30-bed shelter, and not everything was under one roof like it is today. We have the two adjoining buildings here and over 100,000 square feet of property. Um, in the beginning, we were 30 beds in in set up like a university campus would be like your food would be in one building your health care would be in a different yeah. those kind of things and they'd have to um, move amongst them now it's all under one roof so quite a big change um so for that how was the initial funding received to be able to put together all of this i actually don't no? know okay. <laughs> okay. um <You> so <laughs> So we had said in the email that there's going to be a grant. If like our group wins for this um, project, there will be a grant of, I believe it's about $5,000. Mm -hmm. So if the charity was to receive that grant, what do you believe would be done with the money? So it goes into our general operating budget, um, which covers everything from like keeping our lights on, our kids fed, um, them warm and closed, and the health care, the counselors, and things that they need. For the sake of your project, you can say that five thousand dollars go would go towards feeding our kids for two days, which is breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Right. Um, for the hundred twenty-two youth that stay with us, um, and then there's an additional anywhere from fifty to a hundred kids that will drop in in our community support services downstairs mm -hmm. on a daily basis. So, yeah, yeah. somewhere in that range. Okay, okay so. I know you guys do have a lot of volunteers. Is there any like sort of process you go through for choosing who you would like to volunteer rather who you would not? Mm -hmm. There's, it's very much like applying for a job. There's an application form. Um, you would have interviews and then you'd also have to go through background checks. Right. So everyone would get a police check and a vulnerable person's check. Um, and then there'd be like, an orient if you were chosen, there'd be an orientation over like you know, what you're going to be volunteering for and all that kind of stuff. Um, last year, we received over 600 applications to be a volunteer here, and we only have 120 active volunteers. That includes our board. So it's a lot we have to say no to. Um, what kind of jobs would the volunteers do? We look for volunteers that have a special skill, something that they can offer to our youth. So say you worked... Um, at a bank, do you want to host um, like a budgeting workshop or something like that? Um, if you have a particular talent, you can play piano, you can play a sport really well, those kind of things. You could f facilitate those activities with our kids. We have one volunteer who brings in his dog to just hang out. Um, we have a break dancing group that comes in and they do some sort of like break dancing and literacy thing with the youth. So. It totally depends, but yes, basically we want you to have something that you can offer our kids. Is yeah. there an age restriction for volunteering? So, typically we don't allow anyone under the age of 25 into the right. shelter. Um, we make an exception for YPI kids because it's for your project and right. you could win $5,000. Um, so yeah, you need yeah. to be over the age of 25 and right. go through the process. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so after... Um, Okay, so before discussion, I'm gonna take a different one. Um, how long do you kids generally stay here, or is there like a restriction on that, or is it just however long they need, as long as they're in the age restrictions? Yeah. So until they turn, like when they're sixteen, until they turn twenty five, mm -hmm. and they age out, and they would go to an adult shelter, they could stay with us. While you are staying with us, you commit to some sort of plan that's different for every 
individual. So you go over with your caseworker, you figure out, um, would I like to go back to school? Would I um, like to start applying for jobs or post-secondary education? Um, do I have a mental health issue? I really need to see a doctor about it, attend appointments, those kind of things. So it's completely different for every individual. Um, but while you're staying here, you're committed to working towards some sort of plan. Um, yeah, so the average stay would be about two weeks, but it totally depends. And that can be broken up over a longer period of time. It could be a couple days here, a couple days there, and maybe not see you for a month's time, and then you're back again. Right. It just depends. Okay. Um, do you keep in contact with the youth you've helped? Like once they're gone? We try to, but um, our youth, you know, tend to be pretty transient. But we might not hear yeah. from them um, even if we try to. We do have, um, we call them youth and transition workers, and they work with helping <coughs> keep that relationship. So it would be once um, a youth is transitioning into independent living or shared living with a roommate or what have you, um, I'll keep in contact primarily over like texting mm -hmm. um, to see you know how's your job going or how's your new place or whatever it is just checking in do you want to meet for a coffee those kind of things um, so we do make an effort and we do have some that come back and speak at like our events or just pop in and say hello because they want to see their caseworker and tell them something really exciting that's happened or whatever since they've been here but Oftentimes, it's a little more difficult to keep in touch, yeah. Like a small boat on the ocean Sending big waves into motion Like how a single word can make a heart open can make an explosion and all those things I did I still believe 